conversation so we'll be talking about youth 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 so i expect a lot of youth here so if you are still coming please um join us so that we can have an interactive session uh, so that we discuss all things that um brings youth in agriculture and uh, make youth enjoy agriculture so karibuni sana thank you janetta my name is Alice Maros. As I was introduced, I'm the FAO Communication Officer and your MC for today. The topics of the discussion revolve around youth as catalyst for market development. How can young entrepreneurs accelerate food systems transformations? Without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Boslo Stowiski, the IFAD Country Director, to give the welcoming remarks. Welcome. Um fellow colleagues from the UN family, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, I'd like to welcome you to this Rome-based UN agencies um, in Tanzania event, uh, which will provide an interactive platform to highlight Tanzanian youth's important role in food systems. Young people, to which I belonged until very recently, account for 56% of the active labor force in Tanzania. However, most are unemployed, underemployed, or working in uh, precarious conditions, uh, limiting their contribution to food systems and national development. They also face various food systems related challenges from the production to consumption of safe, nutritious foods, including insufficient access to information, resources, and tools, and limited knowledge and skills. This interactive session aims to identify opportunities for youth in Tanzania to tap into, to tap into the government's Building a Better Tomorrow Youth Initiative for Agribusiness and other similar investments to catalyze youth engagement. In this session, we will discuss critical entry points and highlight the need for stronger youth engagement to accelerate sustainable food systems transformation in Tanzania, including measures to be taken to enhance youth contribution to Tanzania's competitiveness in national, regional, and global markets for sustainable food systems transformation. We also aim to use this platform for the youth to network, share experiences and innovations, and find local solutions to food systems challenges including deliberating on key elements needed to create a conducive enabling environment for youth-led startup businesses. Last but not least, to advocate for increased stakeholders investments and resources for youth economic empowerment in food systems. We anticipate this discussion will increase understanding of opportunities and entry points for increased youth engagement in sustainable food systems transformation. Uh, we also hope that it will lead to uh, expanding youth-driven innovations and solutions for sustainable food systems transformations. Karibuni sana and welcome. Now I'd like to let us welcome Ms. Vumlie Kikambuka, the program coordinator for the ministries of Ag Ministry of Agriculture's Building a Better Tomorrow Youth Initiative for Agriculture to kick off the discussions. Today we are going to discuss youth as a critical for market development. So we are going to look at um, how young entrepreneurs can accelerate food systems in Tanzania. So we have uh, the panelists. I would like to in uh, invite them. Um, we have Balaka Jelmaya Shijenga, the co-founder and CEO of Kilimo Fresh Food Limited. Please welcome to the panel. Um, we'll have with us Ms. Zena Mshana, co-founder, Beta Market for Crop Products and Tanzania Entrepreneur Incubation Hub. We also have... Um, Wisdom Abdieli Mola, CEO um, Bora Kirimo Biashara Company. Welcome. As I've introduced today, we are going to look at uh, youth as a catalyst for market development. And um, uh, we will be guided by the theme of this forum that uh, it's time now for African countries 
to recover, regenerate, and act. So the discussion will be based on action. What are the action insights? We'll, get, we'll be incited by our panelists and we'll give the floor to you, um, uh, the audience, to contribute to this topic. So let me go straight. Um, I'll start with uh, wisdom. Yeah, wisdom, we know Tanzania, we have a, a lot of opportunities uh, for market. Um, uh, given that Tanzania, we are member state of the uh, East Africa community and the SADC. So, and these are the larger um, uh, integration blocks in Africa. Um, this provides opportunity for Tanzania to trade and feed over 400 million people in the continent. But the uh, trade balance in Tanzania, we know, is still low. Uh, now, Wisdom, can you tell us what action measures should be taken to enhance youth contribution to the Tanzania competitiveness at the national, regional, and global level. Please welcome. As youth, we face a lot of problems and challenges in our day-to-day -day activities. As you know, the production chain in commercial agriculture require large and long-term investment. We youth people who decided to venture into a business, there are the most, they, they must be provided with enabling environment to help them to succeed. In an experience in the agribusiness as youth group since 2014, it took us about six years for us to take a shape. As you know, in the agribusiness, this model is divided into three main areas. One is farmer who cultivate crop. Second, is the factory, which uh, converts uh, raw materials into a finished product. And third is distribution, or delivery of finished product to the consumer. So, all these three require capital, and they require experience and knowledge. So, some of the challenges which face or hinder youth to prosper include lack of capital. So, what to do? First is to provide capital to the startup business. So the government and the other stakeholders should provide capital to the startup business so that they can succeed and achieve their dreams. Secondly, is provision of necessary products, improved tools and knowledge in rural areas where business ventures are located. So in rural areas, so that to attract youth to engage in agribusiness, and in, in order to get the, this uh, local market, the regional market, and international market, in rural areas, there must be availability of modern machinery system on which will help to change raw materials into finished goods. Also, packaging and distribution to increase production value and matching the ones or those goods with the global market. Another is partnership and collaboration among youth groups and the SMEs so that they will share resources they own in order to get fund or we can call it a consortium so as you know youth who we are fresh from school we lack capital though we have good business ideas so in order to get a market and to get tender we have to join forces by doing so we can get market for example a business which engage rice production could be a in partner with a farmer who is engaging in beans production. And together, they can complement each other in market. Rice is sold together with beans. This will help them to learn from each other and even team up and start exporting those products. Another way in order to help youth to get market and to be sustainable is production of simple but durable machinery in the agribusiness sector at the affordable price. This should, be, this should also go in hand with training of agro-machinery. Nowadays, youth prefer simple things which has huge income. So the improvement of agro-machinery can facilitate increased output and higher value product. Another is investing in education, training, innovation, and digitalization to enhance attractiveness, 
productivity and the sustainability of agriculture and food system. This will help to foster in the youth entrepreneurship in the access to finance, land, market, and service. Last but not least is developing inclusiveness and participatory policy and the programs that address the specific needs and the aspiration of young people. So this policy should show how young people will access land for agriculture, how to get support in case they want to invest in agriculture, how to do, how they can acquire loan so that for those who are fresh from school. Also, there should be a clear policy on how to help young people to engage in economic and production. And I can add something on that. In order to get market for our local product is to establish the stage that will provide the visibility of micro business products on national, regional, and global scale. Thank you, Wisdom. Thank you so much for the insight of the uh, opportunities. And you mentioned that uh, we need to reach out to youth in the Lulo area and providing simple and affordable technology for them to do agribusiness. So uh, coming to you, Zena Mishana, uh, what key element do you think should be looked at to create a conducive enabling environment for youth, youth-led startup agribusinesses? I'm so honored to be here today and I will share some few things which are the key element. I can say um, in every panel when you visit or when you listen, they are talking about youth. It's all about uh, uh, knowledge, uh, capital, and also technology and innovations. Those are the key things that are, is needed to be addressed to young agripreneur for rural area and for urban area as well. We had a project with FAO and we managed to incubate use for last year. And I, I could say that it's a, it's a very good chance for us to learn what are the problem, what is like for, for them to understand or to continue to grow on their startup business. Um, on my side, I learned a lot about knowledge. When you have those young agripreneurs and incubating them on the process of learning of doing agribusiness issues, you can understand that they have a lack of knowledge in uh, skills, even mentorship, or even uh, business planning. They can have an idea but where to start, where to end, access in market, even if funding issue, it's not all about giving them money, but even technical support. Even if you bring them a machine is as a group or individual, how are they going to make uh, products, assuring product, even quality and food safety? The monitoring issue is needed for them in order to grow in a food sustainable value chain. And another thing is that, uh, um, um, innovations innovations is everywhere so if they cannot meet an innovation so they cannot even go with what is going on in the world to be innovative to understand even if are the youth or women in a rural area or in an urban area they need to understand we are here on agrf there is a lot of innovations for the youth even if this investment pitching issue so i think the private sector government and the international ngos Together we can work together and we can bring a lot of youth and women in the market so they can be able to uh, produce a value chain food, food system. Thank you. Now coming to Baraka, you know, we know you are doing quite well in the culture sector among a few youth. Um, can you advise Tanzanian youth? We, we have told by the previous speaker that uh, over 56 percent of the active labor force is contributed by the youth but a lot of them are unemployed or they're not um, they're not uh, having a, you know a, a col white collar jobs what advice are you giving to the tanzanian youth on taking advantages of opportunities and the programs which are youth focused the likes of the building better tomorrow and um, um, how can these programs be inclusive to reach them out across the country. Please welcome. 
So first of all, I'd say um, education and skills uh, development. So these, most of the invest investment opportunities comes with a lot of uh, capacity building, training, uh, knowledge sharing, etc. Youth can leverage these uh, opportunities to build uh, their skills, but also um, to learn and especially understanding on how other people, on how other startups outside Tanzania uh, are changing uh, structures in agriculture, but also how are they innovating the whole supply chain. So, for example, we have things like uh, production technology they use in production, but also packaging also in terms of marketing, go-to-market strategies, etc. So there are different skills that youth can leverage on, especially from these opportunities that can help them to really build their capacity in terms of um, building, when they're building their own ventures. Second, I would say is entrepreneurship and innovation. We have so many problems in our food systems, especially um, I've lived in the rural areas for a couple of years and I've, I've lived in urban areas. In agriculture, there are so many challenges in rural areas. If we can help farmers overcome these challenges, we can solve uh, half of our problems because half of the food we produce goes to waste. So youth can leverage these opportunities to start small scale. It could be farming ventures. It could be logistics. It could be I mean, distribution, processing, packaging, marketing, etc. So these opportunities comes with a lot of, uh, uh, this investment comes with a lot of opportunities and youth can leverage this to start their own small scale ventures, employ themselves and employ other people and solve the problems we have in our food systems. Another point is network and collaboration. So with these opportunities, youth can leverage them to collaborate with, let's say the government, um, other partners, uh, corporate partners in, uh, in Tanzania, the likes of maybe it could be uh, telecommunication companies, it could be banks, it could be other agricultural company, uh, farmers cooperative, etc. We can leverage these uh, opportunities and these investment opportunities to collaborate with other peers and really uh, form a great, a great uh, opportunity for other youth as well to grow in, in this uh, agricultural sector. But also access to finance. I have raised a couple of funds from different investors, especially um, internationally, this is because they came to Tanzania, they say we want to invest in startups, we were looking for companies to put money, but I see most of, and I'll be very honest with you, most of Tanzanians are a bit uh, laid back, they really don't believe that these things are real, they don't take advantage of these opportunities. I've participated in many international competitions, you find you're the only Tanzanian, a lot of Kenyans, a lot of South Africans, half of them, big number, Nigerians, why they are not Tanzanians? Yesterday, I think, the day before yesterday, we had uh, you know, go get us competition here, 15 participants, 11 are selected non-Tanzanians. Why? We should ask ourselves, why are we not in this list? Why are we not in the top list? So I think it's because maybe lack of awareness. Also, I think this is also another part where we, we need people like WFP or maybe other organizations to really increase awareness of these available opportunities especially outside the wrestling but also i think youth also need to really make a decision to take advantage of these opportunities because trust me we are a bit behind compared to our, uh, our fellows in east africa kenya uganda southern africa nigerians are doing even better than all of us we have policies existing policies but things have changed a lot recently and they keep on changing and if you look outside our country, like other members um, in East, West, Africa, Europe, developed countries, a lot of things have changed compared to what we are working on right now. So youth can leverage these platforms to share uh, policies that can really improve youth engagement in agriculture, especially for the future of our food systems. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Baraka. Over to you, the audience. You're welcome for your contribution, your questions to the uh, panelists. You can be specific to the, uh, uh, your, your question, you can uh, uh, specify who is it going to. So welcome. I think what we have to do, um, uh, just to top or not the panelists have just said, uh, we need to promote uh, culture of entrepreneurship and innovation among youth. And how are we going to do this? It must start with political will, which creates a conducive environment for that culture to be promoted. So it started with a political will and we, we, we commend the good job that the government has done so far, particularly in BBT, but also the good job that have been done by other actors. It's very important. It's, it must be from public and the private actors, not from public alone. 
So I will also take this opportunity to comment the good works that have done by other actors. For instance, FAO, FAO last year, they had their youth incubation programs. And uh, I, then, and the others among the young entrepreneurs who hosted those uh, uh, youngsters to bring a, a thing so true about agriculture. So once that uh, political will is in place, the program like BBT and the like is both from public and private sector will come to into press. And uh, that will be a, now a conducive environment to promote the culture of entrepreneurship and innovation among the earth. Once this culture is promoted, and the rate of financial support to those youth uh, to kick off their, their business. I think that will be a game changer. And the, the only thing that we have to do, uh, as long as we want to address or to include youth or to promote youth involvement Thank in agriculture. Thank you. So, in a second, I'd like to call the uh, uh, public and the private sector to do more on this space so that we can benefit more young farmers. Thanks. Thank you for contribution. Uh, I think the government is trying very much with the development partners. But my concern is, uh, I think we call up now the family level. It's where the problem is. Uh, when I talk to most of the leaders that are influencing me and other people, we find that their parents played a big role when they were growing up. So I think, apart from lifting this uh, to the government, the government mm. is on the high top level. So if you don't have the, the attitude that you have been mentored since when you are young, it's, it can be very difficult. That's why even today we have some leaders in the offices. I'm an entrepreneur. When you tell that I want to do something like this, they are the one who take you back. So if we have this kind of leaders as well, so what do you expect? So I think, let us also involve the family. Entrepreneurship to start from the, uh, the family level, mm -hmm. then primarily education. Some of the teachers are the ones who make people to scare going to entrepreneurship. When you want to, to scale on the other side, so they mm -hmm. tell you something that are negative. Mm -hmm. So they make you fear and start thinking that, okay, I will finish, then I'll go to be employed. So I think this is my recommendation that uh, it's better also now let us have the platform where parents can be told that if you have a you 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 impact positive uh, at your children and also the primary level education the secondary and other thing this can after 10 years we'll be having more entrepreneurs rather than just attacking the government itself and uh seeing you our other partners, they are trying to do their level best. This is my comment according to my experience, but also I've been supported by my family. That's why today I'm enjoying the journey of being an entrepreneur. As young men, we have to partner and work together. That's very important. We have to share the same resources. We have to, uh, to share some expatriates together. Agriculture is really a, a business, but why young men are not involved in agriculture? So it's like... There is a lack of incentives there. So I think Bora Food knows that we have now designed a new program which aim at uh, involving youth in agriculture. This program will um, ensure that uh, youth, they access loan from the bank and the NSSF makes a grantee to this youth so that they can access loan, but also they become a part of national social security schemes. According to the uh, International Labor Organization, ILO, it looks like there is no uh, emphasis on the farmers uh, to be part of national social security. So for us, we think this program will emphasize this youth to be part of that uh, uh, national social security to access what we call health insurance, but the other um, uh, financial incentives that, that, that uh, what I, I, can, I can say. That's all. There's a question, and it's uh, for all of us. We know when the government wanted to um, recruit the first cohort of the BBT, we mm -hmm. had a lot of applications, right? Yeah. So we have been talking like peop young people doesn't want to go into agriculture. Mm -hmm. Why did we have so many young people interested in that? So if we get the question to that, we, we, we have to ask ourselves, what was there in BBT which attracted all these young people wanted to go into agriculture sector. And that can be a very good starting point for us as a nation to, 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 to engage more young people into agriculture. So one of the answers we get is the will is there, 
the young people are ready, but we just need to put uh, the right uh, setup for them to be able to engage into the agriculture sector. Not only agriculture, you cannot embark into any economic activities which the environment are not right. How are we going to make sure that these young people who are into agriculture are able to employ more young people into the agriculture sector? So now I think we should really focus on how can we get more employment opportunities within the agriculture sector. But again, there is a lot as a nation we can continue to do in terms of putting the right uh, policies, the right environment so that these young people can be successful into the sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Honest. The Building Better Tomorrow is one of the programs which goes straight into solving the challenges. Because we know that uh, the bottleneck for youth and women to engage in the agribusiness is access to land, finance, technology, and market. So with the Building Better Tomorrow, the, the model is a broke farming model. Putting young people and women together, cultivating, uh, you know, using technology, get access to finance, and sell to an identified market. So such kind of programs really attract youth. So we need you know, to replicate and even have some more programs of uh, such kind of programs. Yeah. Any other contribution? I just wish to hear how easy it is. How um, are we making it so that we inspire the Tanzanian youth to come into agriculture? I'm talking of agriculture because we have mindset around, we have notions, we have a lot of things. So if somebody is following the AGRF now, like try to motivate them how easy it is, but I don't fail to hear about difficulties. I know it is easy. So let's talk to them and let's inspire them that it's not difficult out there. It's something that is easy. It's just like we just want to start it. Okay, thank you so much, Jolenta. Yeah, as we said, the discussion is centered to the theme that we need to uh, recover, regenerate, and act. So, on the uh, closing remarks, the panelists will tell us the action point, what needs to be done in the, you know, what measure to be taken actionly, what should be t done in the area of police, what should be taken in the area of uh, uh, financing. So, we'll hear from you. There's been a lot of effort and a lot of investment that's been done, done on BBT. My experience shows that uh, normally during development, you solve one problem, you normally it creates a diff another challenge. I'm hearing some really good stories from the youth. Um, I think these stories are not known out there. So the only way we can make a change is to reach a critical mass. If we don't reach critical masses, in terms of these innovations, we definitely will not make the change that we want. So these stories need to be out there. I know the young, the youth, will go into all these media like the X, Twitter is now called X, eh? X and the what not and what not, so that uh, everybody uh, is able to access these, uh, these, these stories and see that there is success. Because um, if it, a good thing will, will, will sell itself. So for a long time, agriculture was drudgery. Someone would not go to agriculture. When, when I grew up, I saw how suffering my parents were suffering on the farm. And you tell me to go and do farming, I would never go there. So if farming has become interesting, let's share the stories so that the young men can also see that it is interesting and they will go there. I can assure you mm -hmm. of that. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. I would like to respond a bit, Mr. Benny. You advise on uh, these flagship programs to be uh, going by, prof uh, by piloting before enrolling to our bigger. We know the challenges and opportunity already. So it's now time to act. So the BBT is going straight to solve the problems. And before any production, we identify the, the market. So the first thing in the broke farm is to know who is the buyer and what contractual basis. And another thing is uh, we have started with the piloting. Remember, BBT is going to be rolled out across the country, but to start, we will start with the block farms in Dodoma. And we have chosen Dodoma because it's a hot, po hot spot point where we believe we, if, we make it, if we make it right in Dodoma, we can be able to replicate across the ecological zones of Tanzania. Um, another thing is about the communication, uh, reaching out to a bigger big, uh, community. So we have a communication, a communication strategy 
which will make sure everybody, every youth is aware. The only thing which is uh, needed for the youth is change of the mindset and see, you know, uh, um, be able to receive the information and, uh, you know, tap the opportunities for action. To break that, it will take time. It will take time, advocacy, and partnership. It's a collective action. So I'm here calling our partners in the house today uh, to collaborate with the youth who are already successful in, in agribusiness. Let's bring in the youth that do not believe in agriculture, or maybe they believe in agriculture, but they don't know where to begin or how and the whereabouts. Let's bring in the youth, incubate them, and the incubators should be the ones who are doing well in agriculture. Incubate them at a certain uh, period of time. Then when they are well enough, they know the uh, technical know-how, they know the market, they know, they know, they know, they know. Uh, then the, the partners now should support these youths, these youths uh, to go establish their own ventures. I think this might uh, bring in some mitigations. It might not help per se, but somehow it will mitigate. Thank you. In your closing remark, please highlight what are the key action points should take home from this uh, preliminary discussion. Thank you. Oh, thank you for my remarks. I think we need to continue to have a collaboration to solve the challenge and accessibility of market for youth and women in rural and urban area. So we need to work together as a government, private sector, and other organizations, local and international organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wisdom, please. Thank you, madam. My advice to my fellow youth, I encourage you to engage in your business. We as youth, we have started small recently, and now we have a big market. We are official suppliers of meals to school. Up to now, we supply to nine schools. Also, we supply our product to the uh, pipeline project, oil, oil pipeline project from Uganda to Tanga, and also to various mining company in Geita. We have started small. Now we have some achievements. I can encourage you to invest in agriculture. In economics, we studied that food demand has in, inel in elastic demand, meaning that every time we consume food, you can buy clothes today and you can stay for one month or one year. But you cannot say today I have ate something and I will stay for one year or two days without eating. And there is high rural urban migration. So if you will invest in your business, you can get a lot of support. We as Bora Kilimobiashara, we have get support from MEDA, from Sanku, from IITA, from GAIN, from local government and from the Ministry of Youth through a Youth Development Fund. And we have made a lot. And recently, we have been the first winner in the farmers exhibition known as Naninani in Lake Zone. So we have managed to employ more than 32 workers. We pay bills, we pay tax to various uh, government uh, authorities, including TRA, local government, OSHA, NEMKI, TBS, and things of the like. So we are proud of our work. We can uh, invite you to Bora Krimobiashara at Geita to start and to, and to you will be inspired to invest in your agribusiness. So thank you. Thank you. There are more resources now than there ever been before. Um, there's more information now than there's ever been before. With internet, you can access anything. You can communicate with a lot of people remotely. It's time for youth to change their mindset. We should move from waiting to be employed and focus on how we can make our environment better, on how we can improve our communities, how we can solve our challenges. Tanzania has 60 million as but the records from the last census that was done last year, this I think this year. And I think in Africa, population-wise, we are number five or number six. East Africa, the region alone, has over 400 to 500 million people, which is the most populated area. All these are people who need food. The population is increasing, and it will double by 2050. There's a big problem that we're going to face 
and we need to make improvement as soon as possible. There's so much opportunities in the agriculture and improving our food systems. There are resources, there are people willing to support. Youth need to change the mindset and see this as an opportunity to make a change in our life, in agriculture, in our food systems, but also in our economy. Thank you. Our topic was on youth as critical for market development. We have gone through the discussion and all of the discussion identified uh, key points which we need to action and we are guided by uh, the theme that we need to recover, regenerate and act on challenge and potentials for uh, sustainable food systems. We all have a law. The youth themselves have a law, especially to change mindsets and tap on available opportunities. For, all, for a government, we have to create an enable environment uh, for sustainable or for, 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 for enabling youth to do agribusiness. And for all partners, we need to synergize our efforts and collaborate in our investment, what, whatever we do for the youth uh, before we confuse them. So we have a closing remark from uh, Madam. Uh, thank you, Vimilia, for the wonderful uh, moderation. I just want to start by thanking the panelists, Zina, uh, Wisdom, and Baraka. Thank you so much for this wonderful discussion. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, uh, panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be a part of this engaging and thought-provoking discussion centered around the next generation. The diversity of, the, of perspectives and expertise displayed today have greatly enriched our understanding of the critical role that youth entrepreneurs play in driving the transformation of sustainable food system. I would like to thank each speaker, panelist, and participant for this for their valuable contribution. Throughout this discussion, we have seen a dynamic exchange of ideas, which highlights the transformative power of youth entrepreneurs, their innovative spirit, determination, and willingness to embrace a change are propelling us towards a future that is not only sustainable, but also thriving. As we navigate the complexities of today's global challenges, from food security and nutrition to climate change, the youth stand as catalyst for market development. As we conclude this session, I encourage us all to remember that youth empowerment is not just about providing opportunities but about creating an enabling environment where their aspirations can thrive. We must foster an ecosystem that enhances collaboration, knowledge sharing, and cross-sector partnership. It is my hope that the insights gained here will be translated into actionable steps. Let us harness the potential of youth-led initiatives and innovative solutions to accelerate the transformation of our food system. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful day attending the rest of the sessions for the day. Thank you so much, panelists. Thank you. Thank you once again for joining us. We wish you a blessed day. Thank you so much for coming. So before you go, kindly let's have a group photo.